coming to you each week to show you something, something new and fun and interesting that you can incorporate into your oil painting practice. So if you're new here, go ahead and click the subscribe button so that you can start taking part in this every week and you don't miss a thing. So what we're going to do this week is we're not going to paint. What we're going to do is do a little studio cleanup. I know it's not exactly a fun thing to do, but it's a necessary thing to do. So that's what we're going to do this week. I'm going to show you how to clean your oil painting reservoir. So let's go ahead and get settled in and I'm going to walk you through this step by step. So let's cue the intro. Welcome back. So what we have, I've got a lot of stuff kind of going on here, um, but I'm going to cover, you know, when do you know it's time to change the, uh, the Gamsol in your reservoir? And I do use Gamsol. It's, I've got a ginormous gallon of it, but um, Gamsol is an odorless, non-toxic mineral spirits. Um, I recommend this. I only use it in my home studio because it is odorless and non-toxic. When, um, back in the day, everybody would use turpentine, and turpentine, you know, gets a lot of odors and stuff like that, and there was a period of time when I didn't paint because I was either pregnant or my kids were little, and I gave up painting for that period of time because I was worried about using turpentine. Well now, thankfully, we have odorless, non-toxic mineral spirits. So and that's what I have in my reservoir that I'm using to clean my brushes. So we're gonna cover when you'll know it's time. And then we're also gonna cover, you know, um, why you kind of clean your tank. You know, you don't have to. And <laughs> you could always buy a new one if you want to. Um, this is the second one that I've had in 20 years. So it's really not necessary. And these things cost about $36 and it's airtight. So I can take it with me whenever I go outside and paint um, and I don't have to worry about tipping over in my car. So that's nice. So like I said, I've had about two of these in the last 20 years. <laughs> so you get what you pay for, might as well keep it up, right? So why you do it. And then I'm also gonna cover what to do. And there are options with this, of course. So one is just to trash this thing all together. If you do do that, I'm gonna recommend option one. Option one is, so I have cats, <laughs> and so I have whew, kitty litter. <laughs> so what you'll do, kind of like what you do with paint, um, you will dump kitty litter down in here if you want to keep the reservoir. Then you use like a plastic baggie, put the kitty litter in the plastic baggie, and then dump your reservoir contents into the plastic baggie and dispose of that like you would paint, right? So do not, I repeat, do not <laughs> put this stuff down your sink because here's what happens. The reason why you're needing to clean your reservoir is because there's sludge down in the bottom. If you dump this down in your sink, that sludge is gonna settle down into the bottom, uh, the little bend part of your sink, right? So then you'll end up paying a plumber a couple hundred bucks to come and fix it when you could have just as easily, you know, paid 15, 20 bucks for, or it's probably about 15 for a small bag of kitty litter. So my point is, don't put this down the sink, okay? <laughs> um, so option number one, kitty litter, and dispose of it like you would paint. Option two, as you can see here, we are gonna go through option two. I have a number of supplies on my table and we're gonna walk through it step by step. So what I have, um, number one, you do wanna get gloves, because it is a messy, messy task. Um, I know there are oil painters who always paint with gloves on. I do not, because um, I've done a lot of research on how uh, Gamblin puts together their products, and that's why I use Gamblin products is because I know that they're safe 
um, as long as you don't eat them or inhale them. And that's when a lot of the stuff comes into play. Why I put on gloves for this is because it's gross. Um, I mean, it's gross, okay? Uh, <laughs> but with the oil paints, they've had a bad rap since like the you know 17th, 14th century that they cause cancer. Um, that is because way back in the day, people would mix their own paints. And so they had all of this um, powder, the pigment that's coming up into the air before they were able to grind it and mix it with oil, right? So that's what causes the, the cancer is ingesting it or breathing it in. We fortunately don't have that problem um, now because we don't have to mix our own paints. We can buy them already in the tube. So why I wear gloves? Because it's gross. So, okay. I'm going to put my gloves down to the side over here. Now, let me to show you everything that I have here. So I've got my gloves, I've got cheesecloth, rubber bands, and really I only need two, but I grabbed a bunch just in case they snap, you know. Uh, scissors to cut the cheesecloth, a palette knife in case I need to get down in there and really scrape some stuff out. Um, two mason jars. So one will be for the initial straining, and the other one would be for the secondary straining. Okay, of course my oil painting reservoir. And then um, I get another one of these, and I actually recommend like a small one because the small, whatever's in the bottom of this, I can use it. And it's called, um, well, and Gamble makes a product from all of the, the sediment that they collect over the year from producing the paint and using the solvent they'll actually take all that sludge and make a paint color out of it and they call it torrent gray. It's really, really fun, like gray, because it's different every single year and it's based on whatever pigments they use. So if you think about that, I mean, how cool would it be for you to, you're basically making your own paint based on the color palette that you use all the time. So you'd have your own, you know, signature color of paint. So that's why I have this extra jar. So I can actually use some of that if I wanted to. Um, I could save it, use it, and tone lots of canvases with it. So I also have on here a towel just in case I make a big old mess. And then I also have some plastic bags. Again, just in case I make a big old mess, I can kind of contain it a little bit. And then of course I got replacement because I probably will need to replace some of it. Okay. So those are all my tools, pretty much things that you should have around your studio or around your house. Okay. Now, how do I know it's time? So one, see how it's not clear. Let me take this up here. So I did paint yesterday, but by now it should be clear. And also the other way that I know it's time to replace is because um, when I just put some Gamsol in there and I only put maybe like a quarter inch to eighth of an inch over the little grid down there. And so when I leave it for like a day or two and then it's gone, I know that all the sediment down below is absorbing my Gamsol and that's not good. So I'm gonna take this out. Okay, so I can take this and clean it as well, and I do have paper towel as well. So I'm going to put that over on my towel. Okay, so now down in here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut some cheesecloth here. Oh, one other important thing, ladies. Put your hair back in a hat or a ponytail or something because the last thing that you want <laughs> is your face to start itching from the hair in your face. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to kind of push this down and I want it to, to settle down in there, right? So. Okay. There's a, that's pretty good. It's nice and tight. Okay. So I'm going to also take one of these bags and I am, I, I am probably one of the cleanest painters you'll ever meet. So I kind of get a little 
persnickety about some of this stuff. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some kitty litter, put it down in here into this plastic bag, just like that. And so I'm gonna use this jar. Okay, so that way, if any falls out, it's not really wetting. It's not really, you know, rolling off my table or anything. I'm keeping it all nice and contained. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to take him. That jar, it's nice and snug down in there. My bag does not have any holes in it. Yay. Okay. All right, so here we go. Take it and pour it through. So I use apparently a lot of blue. Actually, I love ultramarine blue. It's probably my favorite color. So here we go. We're gonna get, I'm gonna show you this. See all that sludge down there? It's really not that bad, actually. <laughs> like I said, I've actually thrown one of these away, and that was because I couldn't get this thing out of it. Um, that's how lazy I was about it. But yeah, it's not that bad. But you can see like there's stuff on the side down there, and. There's the sludge right there, man. Icky, icky. Oh, but look how pretty. It's got some like um, cobalt teal in there and some probably that quadrocodile magenta. See, it's so pretty. Yay. It's like a really good, um, really excellent neutral. Okay. And I'm gonna, gonna dig down in here and get the rest of that best I can. Oh my, oh my, look at that, look. That was way more down than there. Apparently the bottom was a lot further down than I realized. Oh, but look, it's so rainbowy. Ah, too much, too much. <laughs> All right, okay. So now, another little gross part. I'm gonna pull this up. Gather it together. Oh, no, no, man down, man down. It fell over. Okay, so I'm gonna squeeze it. Okay, now I'm gonna do it again. I'm putting that one in there. Told you it was messy. But look at all this, so I could take that right there I'm not going to, I'm gonna take the next one. Okay, because <laughs> that one's kind of gross. Um, but I could take, there we go, put that over there. I could take that torrent gray and make some paint. And I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna take this next bit because I don't really use a lot of this. I think it's fun in the beginning. Um, but what happens with it over time, because I don't have a, a tube to put it in, it will eventually harden. Unless I, you know, purposely mix it and grind it and do whoop, all of the stuff that you need to do to turn it into paint with linseed oil and such. All right, here we go. I'm going to do this again. Okay, that, not, that little bit right there I'm going to leave that and dump that into another jar. Ew. Dump this really good in here. Oh, got some on the bottom now. Okay. So you can see it's dripping down. Okay. So there's still a lot of mineral spirits actually in there. All right.
So I can take that and I'm going to do it another couple times here. So I'm getting a lot of that sludge out. Okay, again, I'm kind of keeping everything a little bit contained. I'm going to do it again. So I don't ever really expect it to get fully clear, um, but I am removing a lot of that sediment and sludge. Okay, just kind of pushing that down in there a little bit. Swirling it about, because it had some stuff building down on the bottom. Actually, what I may do I still got stuff down in here that I want to get rid of. Sorry, it's like nails on a chalkboard. down in there. There we go. Now we're talking. Let's get some aggression out. <laughs> All right. That's much, much better. Much better. See, look, that's not perfect, but if you want perfect, get a new one. Gonna kind of clean off the edges. And I might dig down in there too. So I'm kind of keeping everything in my little trash bag here. That's so I can just wrap it all up and toss it aside. Okay. I'm going to continue to strain this one. Okay. That's all the sludge that I have. Okay. So now I can take this. And yes, it still looks dirty, but you know. It's better. <laughs> okay. Now, that's in there. I'm going to kind of move that to the side. Now, my reservoir tank, I'm going to clean it as well. So, this is the, the grid that kind of goes down in there. And I figured, might as well, you know, I'm here. I'm already dirty. I already got my mess here. So, I'm just going to kind of take it in there and just paper towel swish it about. Clean the outside, the bottom. Okay. All right. And I, I see stuff on here, so I'm going to clean that off as well. So just kind of cleaning the rim of it. So that way we make sure that we can still get a tight seal whenever we seal it back. And if you're thinking, geez, Louise, this sounds like a pain in the butt. It's really, it's not. You, you know, you th throw on some music, you get prepared mentally that you're going to make a mess. And, you know, know that you did it. You know, I, I, I love, I'm a very much a do-it-yourselfer. I love just taking something that's not perfect and making it better. And that's basically what we're doing right here. And that's what we do with all of our paintings, too. All right. So notice how there's good, probably about an inch in between where everything was and where it is now. So now I'm going to pour some of my mineral spirits in here. I'm going to move this off to the side. There we go. So that's 
gonna settle for a minute. <laughs> I like how it bubbles. So you let it settle for about like 20 minutes and then you'll have a nice clear paint again because its sediments are all settling down at the bottom and you've got more uh, nice clean reservoir. Now I'm going to show you something else. So all that sludge that I've collected over the side, put that to the side. So this sludge, right? It's like icky, ew, but kind of pretty at the same time because you can like see some of the rainbows and all the colors that you use. So I have, occasionally I just like pre-draw some blocks and you know, I paint, I try to paint daily, but it doesn't always happen. So I'll draw out a bunch of stuff. So with this, I use my nice, nice clean reservoir here to get my bristles kind of wet. So now I take that sludge and like if you've got a bunch of, you know, canvases that you need to tone, this is a fabulous way to tone a whole bunch of little canvases. And you know what? It dries so fast because you're using mineral spirits. You know, there's no like linseed oil in it to make it uh, dry slower. So it's going to dry pretty fast. But it makes a nice, nice kind of pretty gray tone canvas. And yeah, so you really can waste nothing. So now I'm gonna put that to the side, let it dry, and then I can paint on it later. Easy peasy. Okay. Yeah. So that wasn't too painful. We did that. I don't know how long it took, but we did it. Probably less than 30 minutes. So, and you've got a tone canvas, clean reservoir, and a little paint to play with. So I hope you enjoyed today's little session on how to change your oil painting brush cleaning reservoir. And um, stay tuned for next week. Now, if you are looking for a painting project, I did release a new painting project on my website. You can go to stephanieweaverartist.com forward slash art classes or just Stephanie Weaver, uh, <laughs> stephanieweaverartist.com. Click on the classes and you'll see a listing of all the classes. The one that just went out yesterday is this pretty uh, purple flower with a yellow butterfly. But it is chock full of really good stuff. Um, there's bonus materials on how to glaze and what to consider in your um, evaluating your own paintings. So go check that out. In the meantime, I look forward to seeing you guys next week and I hope you stay safe, happy, and healthy. See you soon.